Here is Norma Plummer's starting seven. Yeah, three remain in the starting seven from yesterday's win. We see Stoltz get her first opportunity in this Netball World Cup, but women of the moment, Bongi Msomi gets her 100th cap for South Africa and joins the Centurion Club of Erin Berger and Marika Holtzhausen, who start on the bench today. For Samoa, we have a couple of changes. Oh, Fiji, sorry, excuse me, I'm still thinking of before. A um, couple of changes in their starting lineup. Goal shooter Panapasa comes into the lineup as well as Muluava in the wing defence position and the same circle defence partnership yesterday that held their own against the Jamaicans. Brilliant. So the Fiji fans, Fiji, you beauty. <laughs> the Fiji Pearl fans are in. The Proteas South African fans are in. And there they are. The pre-match ritual, Bongi Mzomi. A hundred caps, pivotal in every single game that she plays. A big celebration, understandably, for her today. But she and her side have a job to do. South Africa against Fiji. The players are on court. Umpires, Kate Stevenson from England. Umpire two, Lisa Douglas from New Zealand. Reserve umpire, Jackie Mizon from England. These two sides have only played each other once in World Cup history. And South Africa got the win. So the noise being wrapped up at the MS Bank Arena, the first centre pass between South Africa and Fiji. Hands raised by the centre for South Africa, Grizzle. And we are up and running, Mickey. This is fast, this is furious. South Africa want to put something on the board early doors. Yeah, and so loud. Clearly lots of fans in for both nations and straight away we see none other than Carla Pretorius into the action. Two-handed, running hard and flat on her shoulder of her goal attack and coming out the interception. I wonder how many times we're going to see and that over the course of the next 60 minutes. Yeah, that win yesterday for South Africa against Trinidad and Tobago. 76-45, they were never behind the South Africans. One out the first quarter by four goals. Stoltz decides to pass it off into the goal shooter position. Pagita, player of the match yesterday against Trinidad and Tobago. And she's up and she's running. Yeah, she was. She only missed one goal yesterday. Shot a massive total of 42 out of 43 goals. Ended on 97%. So absolutely standout numbers from Lise Pogita. We'll be looking to see how she develops over the course of today and straight away from Bella into the action wearing that goalkeeper bib and the South African Spa Proteus fly down the court. Stokes gets her hands on the ball. Lovely easy one-two in. Oh, so unlucky. Fantastic tip from captain Karatoka of Fiji. It was. What a jump. But it's a three nothing lead for South Africa at the moment so South Africa on their centre pass the speed the accuracy this is what Fiji have got to contend with today lost that match against Jamaica yesterday as I mentioned 85 29 the fourth quarter was their best scoring for the Fijians they got 11 goals in that final quarter but they've got to hold on to South Africa early doors here they go on the attack into the hands of their goal shooter. Goalkeeper, penalty. There we go. We're up, we're running. 4-1 South Africa lead. That'll calm the nerves, Mickey, of the Fijians. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is a really big occasion for them. They played a really tough lot of 60 minutes yesterday against the Jamaicans. And the score really blew out and they end up losing by 60 goals. So they'll be hoping for a much tighter contest today and to put out a performance that they can be proud of going into tomorrow's contest. High and across court. <laughs> a beautiful shot, a beautiful piece of work in South Africa. They're carrying on. Yeah, they left off after that big win yesterday. Yeah, so slick, aren't they? So quick with their ball speed. And we spoke about this yesterday, Bongi and Somi just owning that circle edge, making sure that she's always heading towards it on that second phase of the centre pass, and that was so deadly for South Africa yesterday. Stoltz gets on the board nice and early with a lovely long-range shot. She'll be really happy and buoyed and take confidence from that. So Fiji. 
looking to pass it around the course, the South African defence and making it hard for the Fiji Pearls. It's their ninth World Cup, their first one back in 1975. Their 11th four years ago in Sydney for the Fijians. They've got the youngest team on average. Just over 22 years old is the average age of the Fiji team. Carla Pretorius really exposing that youth and inexperience in the Fiji attack end. Once again, sitting off the body of a goal attack, coming all the way through with a two-hand interception. She is one of the most on-form, if not the on-form goal defence in the entire world right now. And I'm sure Norma Plummer is absolutely wrapped to have her as part of the Spark Proteus. Yeah, quick glance up at the screen, you'll see a lot of the players doing that because there's four the big scoreboards above myself and Mickey Austin's head, splitting the two courts here at the M&S Bank Arena. Oh, the line, set. Yep. Has the clock on it, so all shooter. the players can be time aware. And and above them were contact. yesterday. We noticed that they were getting used to the system of the clock being above them. Lots of glances up. Look at Bongi Keep her contact, hold I'm going to try not to say she's Next absolutely the everywhere more than twice. I promise yeah. you, Mickey. But I'm going to keep a tally. She's amazing. She really is. And at the moment, her yeah. side... I'm going to wait. Uh, ten goals to one up. Athleticism in its finest form by the Fijian defenders there. We saw another hoist, which is a kind of rugby-style line-out. Two hands on each other, lift them, hoist them into the air to try and put off the shooters. And another tip outside arm from the Fijian goalkeeper in Kawatota there. So getting their hands onto ball early, but just unfortunate to not be able to get more than that one hand on it, or at least deflect it to a teammate. Yeah, she did a great move, and then was penalised. She had a frown on her face, the goalkeeper for Fiji. Katoka stands and waits till the ball comes back Defense down to her Sushin, end. Keep your arms down, please. It's unlucky, a much better passage of play by Fiji. You'll see when they've got the ball in Stretching hand, they just look a little bit panicked. But that is a fantastic Africa. settling shot there from goal attack. Rulani started the game yesterday for Fiji. So she'll feel confident after getting that shot on the board. As quick as you like, South Africa go down the other end. And it is in the hands of the familiar, safe person of Lenny Scott Peter. So it's a 10 goal lead for South Africa, just under 10 minutes leg. remaining. Contact called by the English umpire Kate Stevenson, now on the back line behind the 10 foot post, a missed opportunity. And that's one that South Africa are going to capitalise on in the blink of an eye. Fantastic drive through court from South African wing defence. Can Yiza getting the start today? Maybe just bleeding in a little bit of experience there, resting some combinations. If you've got the luxury to do that, then I guess in Norma Plummer's eyes, why not? And who would question the wonder that is Norma Plummer? Well, you don't get much emotion from her. I'm glancing to the left, but Norma Plummer won the World Cup for Australia in 1975. Coached Australia. There she is to World Cup gold in 2007 and 2011. Her and her coaching staff have been making gradual improvements with South Africa over the last few years. Fifth at the World Cup four years ago in Sydney. And let's not forget South Africa hosts the 2023 World Cup in four years' time, the first African contact. nation to do so. How good would a good performance be from an African nation side going ahead? Yeah, amazing news for South African netball and just African nations alike. Norma Plummer has done an absolute outstanding job with the South African Proteas over the duration of her time there in the last four or five years. She has built and built and put in so much work. So. She will be looking for the South African team to finish as high as they can. We spoke about them in the build up of this competition, even mentioned them as medal contenders, which is holding, amazing holding. in terms of where they was four or five years ago. So props yeah, to Norma holding. Plummer and her coaching team of her and Nicole Cusack. 15-2, Fiji. The shooting position, got to capitalise, got to make it count. Good Fiji. stuff from the goal attack. Yunesi Uruluni. Two from three so far. And shooting compatriot Tanapasa, one from one at 
So creating a few more opportunities now, Fiji, getting themselves into the shooting position. Contact There's another one that goes in for the Fiji side. Yeah, and a different starting goal shooter today than who they went with yesterday in their game against Jamaica. So Panapasa will be really happy to get herself on the board. She's on two out of two at the moment at 100%. So really, really good percentage, obviously, but just looking for her mid-quarters to be able to find her a little bit more. She's got a lovely, strong presence inside that goal circle. She is taller than the goalkeeper in Spar Protea in Vembella. Look at that height difference there. So they'll be looking to expose that with some really, really well-placed feeds into the circle. Yep, 18 years old, Lydia. Panapasa stands at 1 meter and 92 on her World Cup debut. <laughs> Great scrap for the ball there from both South African defenders. We just spoke about the ball placement into the circle, and you saw from that last feed in there from Fisher. It had lovely height on it, but it was placed on the wrong side. She actually sent it towards Vimbella, the, the goalkeeper to South Africa. And you know, if you've got such a lovely holding strong shooter in there, you've got to make sure the ball is placed well and you can't just lob it and hope for want of a better phrase. It's a great scrapping across the floor from the ball. Contact, wing defense. Contact, goal defense. Yes, step forward, goal defense. Yep, a little wave of the South African flag, a huge flag by a couple of fans just behind the East Pavita at the moment. And they're going to have to wave it once again in a minute. Looks like a father and daughter in, enjoying the netball. There they are, just on the right of his shot. Oh, yes, it's waved again. Enjoying so far the South African fans, the start they've made in this Group C match. 18 4, we're coming up to five minutes remaining of the first quarter. Great right outside arm from Pinyasa there. She's made sure that she's earned that starting position, disrupting play, really happy to get in and amongst it. Oh, round of applause indeed. Here's your 18-year-old Panapasa. Made a World Cup debut yesterday when she came on as a substitute. Vicky Wilson, the Fijian head coach. She's one that's steeped in history as well, in terms of doing some good stuff. The former Aussie Diamond, the equal top Aussie with Liz Ellis for World Cup appearances. Four in total for the head coach of Fiji, Vicky Wilson. the assistant coach of New Zealand, wasn't she, Mickey, four years ago at the World Cup? So experience and abundance on both benches from the coaching side. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Vicky and Norma know each other very, very well from their time in Australia. And uh, amazing for Fiji to have someone of that calibre coach in and amongst their lineup. She's made sure they've got lots of preparation matches in the lead up to this competition, playing the New Zealanders and exposing this Fiji team to that level of opposition and that can do nothing but grow the form of netball in their country. Stoltz with the shot, the goal attack for South Africa. Six from six, 100% so far. Hold time, wing defence, that's persistent contact, it's a caution, penalty. Yeah, so we see a caution there given out from umpire Kate Stephen against setting the president nice and early. It was for persistent contact. So as we know, netball is a non-contact but contested sport, which means it can be 50-50, but if you are deemed to be leaning in more than the other player, then that is going to be contact and it's not allowed. And what happens if you are infringing constantly over and over again, then the umpire can give you a caution. The next stage after that, it then extends to a warning, and if you continue to keep infringing, then as we saw yesterday for the first time in a Netball World Cup from an African nation player, you can be removed from the court for two minutes. Advantage contact, goal attack! 20 playing seven. A very high scoring first quarter from the Proteas here. Advantage contact and defence. South African national side to sport, of course, known as the Proteas, named after the South African national flower, in case you're wondering. And that flower's blooming at the moment, Mickey. 20 leading seven, under three minutes remaining in the first quarter. I like what you did there, that was nice. Nice, nice one, did <laughs> Oh, she's continuing where she left off as well, isn't she? Lenise Pogita, 13 from 14 now. 
That high percentage from our player of the match yesterday, mate, that 14 from 50, she's popping them in left, right and centre. Norma Plummer's going to be happy. She won't show it, but she will be happy. She shows it with her eyes. There she is. <laughs> Just step in, goalkeeper. Where she is, yes. But you know what? I quite like that. You're a head coach of the UK Super League side, Mickey Austin. When you, when you know what your players can do, you want them to do it. They've got a job to do. And she'll be expecting certain things from this match today, Norma Plummer will, before they take on Jamaica tomorrow. She'll be looking for certain things for her players to deliver on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that game between South Africa and Jamaica tomorrow is absolutely monumental. You cannot underestimate how important that game is for these two teams that are competing in it and for the teams outside of it that have got medal hopes in terms of opposition and matchups for the later preliminary rounds. So it's going to be a massive game, you're absolutely right. Norma will be looking to her players and combinations to make sure they put out a performance so that to know that these guys can compete with the second highest team in the world as per the current world rankings. Cross court to him, so many. A little hundred cap bounce pass to her teammate. And another one nearly popped in. But the fight is off. Beautiful overhead from Vegeta back into Unzomi. Coming to the final minute of this first quarter. Rizal and Msomi have got a lovely combination working together as mid-quarters around that circle edge from South Africa at the moment. You can see them really unselfishly looking for each other, swinging the ball, willing to open up the angle for each other. Great chase down from Potkita, behind the back, no look, tap pass to Msomi. Because she knows she's going to be there. That communication, that understanding, that relationships between the players. Absolutely paramount, thrown away four with 20 seconds remaining. So South Africa have started brightly, they'll throw in with Katorius, the goal defence. Nice and controlled in this first quarter. So you train for situations like this, counting down the clock, are you time aware? There was 20 seconds to go when you had the ball, are you going to get a shooting opportunity? Because if that's a quarter that's going goal for goal, that's going to matter. Well, one was popped in, so we'll see if it counts. It could be 23-9 after the end of the first 15 minutes. South Africa, Fiji. We'll confirm whether that one was counted by the shooting star from the Proteas. But either way, it's a big lead by the South Africans, leading Fiji by a clear margin. So a huge difference in terms of stats in that first quarter for the world ranked number five squad. Penalties up, look at that as well, Mickey Austin. 21-10, Fiji leading the way in terms of penalties as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest stat that stood out to me was the turnovers. You had South Africa just on one turnover, which was one unforced error in that quarter. Yes. And you had nine for Fiji. We generally Body say at international level, if you want to win a game, you should be at the end of the game Fiji. sitting on no more than 20 turnovers. So South Africa currently on track to be a lot below that. And Fiji currently not. So that's definitely something they'll be looking to tighten up on as this game goes on. Well, it was a 19-15 lead yesterday for South Africa. We defence contact. With their match against Trinidad and Tobago. So they've started more strongly and Fiji They've got to start popping some in, and that's a good one, because we're into the second quarter, and Fiji now hit double figures, 25-10. Beautiful shot from Lunani there. Oh, huge fall from the Fijian defenders. That's lovely to see, isn't it? Are you OK? Both smiling, both of them get straight up. And that's nice, a lovely round of applause from the crowd as well. Fair contest, eyes straight for ball, and unfortunately on the way down, can't avoid where you land, and it just so happened. The birthday girl from yesterday, and Azel Grizel, is that Grizel, sorry, was underneath the Fiji, looking, any gap, any space, a little bit too long. Sorry, Bao couldn't keep that one in the Fijian centre. Oh, lovely take under control. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? A little tip on there to Bongi and Zomi. Confirmation of the changes made by Fiji. 
Just step forward. There. Contact goal defence, push to the back, penalty. Yeah. Goal defence, give her room. Thank you. Yes, Another one on the ball. Okay, this is centre. Sevatia come onto the court in centre for Fiji. She was the player who started yesterday's game against Jamaica, so clearly Vicky Wilson wanting to call the changes nice and early to try and put some more gold on the board for the Fijian Pearls. The idea was there, but the ball will be picked up. South Africa then on the back line. Pistorius. Oh, obstruction. Yeah. Just completed her master's degree, Carla Pistorius. Playing in that goal defence position for South Africa. Here she is, passing it on. Good vision. Goes back to Pistorius. Vongium Zomi. Nice patient build up by the South Africans. And the predictable South finish. Africa. Good regather from Bogium Somi. Uncharacteristic fumble of the ball there Something on that centre pass line, penalty. but very lucky she was on to the loose ball very quickly. Come further forward. And Red's Further forward. Further forward. An opportunity there, to yeah. lift her shooting percentage and numbers and slots away her eighth DG. out of ninth goal of the match. Pistorius there, shining direction on the most experienced members of the South African side. Structure we need first. Not better than the other, but we're both coffee lovers, me and Carla. South Africa! There you go, it's a random fact for you. That's a, a great fact. She enjoyed it a lot, thank you very much. And what they're enjoying at the moment, Advantage if you're a South contact, Africa contact. fan, 31 10. Defense, With 11 contact. minutes remaining until half back. time. Yes. This quarter, though, South Africa still Body pushing ahead, Mickey. 7 1 so far in the second quarter, the Such South Africans lead. Yeah, and that real trademark drive to the circle edge on their second phase of the centre pass. That second pass after the centre pass has taken. First phase on that occasion went to a driving Carla Pretorius, who was coming up from the back. But the end result is still the same. They want to get driving ball to the circle edge. They want to get the ball as close to their shooters as they can before they deliver to the circle edge, making it. The high percentage safe pass, just like that from Wentz Stoltz there. Lovely high shooting percentages, 96 and 90% across the board. And we see an injury timeout for the Fijian Pearls. Yeah, the goal defence change. And a really big shout from the crowd as Bakuro gets a shot at coming onto that goal defence position. And UK fans will recognise D as a player who competed in the UK Super League last year for Celtic Dragons. So good to see her out there and get her opportunity. Yep. Yep, 10 teams in the UK Super League. They have representation across the 16 Central nations keeper. here in the World Cup. Every single team, as do, incidentally, most from down under 32 players they've got in the World Cup in that Premier Netball League in Australia. So worldwide representation and a good interception and turnover by South Africa. Advantage contact with defence. Kohita wanting a little bit of a better position. Contact centre. And she gets it. And that's 35 for South Africa. Yeah, we see that split circle inside the shooting circle for Spark Proteas. Renska Stoltz presented at the front of the circle. Denise Potkita presenting at the back next to the post. Uh, next to the post. So South African midcourt are absolute sport for choice in terms of where they want to spray this ball at the moment. And Fisher on the ball for Fiji. Always available, giving and going, taking on that circle edge. And that's a much better feed to kind of pass that inside that shooting circle from centre. Sevutia. Great placement, lovely take, and a nice finish. Offside, uh, centre, free pass. Stoltz. Inside. Thought about taking the shot. Contact wing defence. She wanted to get potentially a better position, the goal attack for South Africa. 
but within 10 or 15 seconds later, that's all sorted out. And Pajita puts another one in, 37-11, under nine minutes remaining until half-time. Yeah, but I think if you look in the back of play, Di Bakuro has just come on to goal defence for Fiji, is looking at the umpire and trying to pull time, so I imagine she must be injured because she's only just walked onto the court. On my whistle. Yep, so a lot of action in the... Fijian camp in that goal defence position. Yeah, I think it's an injury. You're right, Mickey. I'm looking across. You can see on some ankle issues. Heavily taped ankles in netball. That's nothing new in terms of having support, but there's clearly potentially an issue there. Maybe it's just with the taping. We'll see. There's another goal defence chain for Fiji. But in the meantime, Stoltz the goal attack for South Africa. Well, she'll get to retake that. Kate Stevenson calling the obstruction. Yep. See in the background of your shot, Sigrid Berger warming up behind the South African bench, and maybe that's a change that uh, is going to be pre planned. So look to see Lenny Spotkita call the timeout potentially. Currently sitting on 97 percent which is where she ended the game yesterday. So a lovely high level of return from her. Spingy pearls go on the attack. Try and craft this ball towards their circle edge. Carla Pretorius getting a hand to another ball. Obstruction. Shortening the distance. Yeah. So there's an obstruction call there. So we have a rule in netball where you have to be three foot away from the player. And you heard umpire Lisa Douglas say nice and clearly you were lessening your distance, which means she may have started three foot away, but she was creeping towards and too close to her shooter. Ooh, the ooh from the crowd here. And a couple more players take a tumble. But they're back, they're up. As the game goes on and under the post, Fiji slot another one in, six and a half minutes remaining. Zomi, looking for space, finding it on the far side in front of the South African bench. Sigi Berger, there she is, continuing to warm up. Great eleva elevation over the shot there from Kawatoka. Lovely hops on her, jumps really tall. Remains legal inside that distance as well. Beautiful feed, step in and finish from Fijian shooter Panapasa there. Nice. One-footed effort, pops one in. Yeah, she's also still on 100%, nine out of nine, but we'll just be looking to lift that volume, you know, as a goal shooter. Hold time, goal defence, that's Second quarter, you should be caution. looking for minimum Penalty. double figures as we hear a uh, caution be given out to the Fijian goal defence. And now I... The persistent contact. And she's doing the same thing over and over and over again. And the umpire has had enough. Lovely fake of the ball on the edge of the circle from Bongi and Somi. Great sense of mind to attack that circle edge with speed. Let's see the defenders over committing and be nice and calm and patient on the ball. So 41-14, coming up to five minutes remaining until half time. Goal defence. That's you've already been cautioned for contact. That's a contact again. It's now a warning. Penalty. So Kate Stevenson being really clear on her instructions there. To the goal defence in Nawai, who was removed from the court by her coaching staff, but penalty. then there was an injury to the replacement. Good Therefore, goal. she's come back on the court. You'll see her calling a timeout now. Goal time which injury is goal defence. Pretty smart in terms of her personal protection, as we saw yesterday in the game Uganda versus England. If you are on a warning and you continue to do the same infringing, you risk being suspended from the court for two minutes and your team has to play with six members. So smart of her to call a timeout and get herself off of the court to keep her out of trouble from the umpires. There's the Fiji bench. 41-15. Thank you, Santa. Nice. Goalkeeper 
contact. <laughs> contact called against Lumbella. She'll stand by. Obstruction. Both. Now both. Both out. Defenders in the circle. Stand by. Now Fiji put another one onto their scorecard. 41-16. Contact wing defence. Penalty. Yes. Advantage of section centre. Again, we see that trademark drive Advantage to the circle edge. Centre. In the South African mid-quarters. Fiji are going to have to look to lift their intensity defensive pressure yes. outside the circle. Their circle defenders Such are working really defense. hard to turn over the ball, but Fiji. by the time the ball's inside the shooting circle, there's only so much you can do, so that pressure really needs to be applied from right the way out the front Fiji. of the circle. Hold time, please. Go so the nice tip out in on their in defensive terms. <laughs> the ball is retrieved, side line in the centre third. That's caught for Fiji. Going to break down the defence of this South African side. Pushing it to the three-second hold limit. Advantage offside wing defence! Lovely feed from nice Caitlin take. Fisher. She is working overtime to try and free herself and become a lovely available for Fiji in that attack end. She's doing three, four, five, six different movements just to be able to be available for one ball. So if that shows you the work rate of the South African defenders. Instruction goalkeeper. Instruction goalkeeper. Yes. Instruction advances goal. Toka. Fiji. Standing by. Two and a half minutes remaining. Fiji trying to feed it in. Shuffling and the rolling around of the circle to get it into the hands of the shooters. And Raluni puts another one on the board with two minutes remaining. So you see that highest World Cup score, 110 versus the Cayman Islands back in yep. 1995. That is huge. Heading towards half time, getting towards the half century South Africa. Big scores in the past for the world number fives. Fifth at the World Cup four years ago in Sydney. Seven of that squad are back here in Liverpool. Oh, gosh, look into your circle. Goal attack. Raluni from Fiji was underneath the post for about four seconds with no defender on her. There is so much congestion for the Fijian players at the moment all across the third line. Lots of players trying to penetrate forward, present for the ball, all touch the ball at the same time, but that means there's no one trying to get depth and drive towards the only place you can score, which is the circle edge. It's going to be really, really important in the second half. They get some penetration driving towards the circle edge because that's the difference between them and the South African team at the moment. But constant attack penetrating their circle edge, pulling the defensive structure apart. So, 60 seconds on the clock. Fiji, I was about to say, looking to try and hit the 20 goal mark, but the ball will be picked up in front of us by South Africa. Bongi and Zomi, time for a couple more goals before half-time here. And there's Denise Pagita. Well, she's due to play in the 2020 season for the Adelaide Thunderbirds. In the second World Cup here, the South African. Contact centre, advantage offside. Great take from Isette Grizel there Contact in that centre position. That's not her first choice position. Usually you more commonly see her in that wing attack position. Yep. She's run really well for me tonight. That combination between her and Bongi and Somi has worked. They've read off each other really well. They've balanced the circle the edge. Central Constantly Bongi available around the circle edge, edge, providing options to their shooters. No, Fiji will take confidence Section. from this quarter. They scored more in this quarter than they did quarter one. They're on double figures in ten. Fiji! And there's the whistle for half-time. South Africa leading Fiji. 46 goals to 19. A high five from the South African team. 47-19 has been confirmed. The big lead for the Proteas as they head into half-time. The words of wisdom from Norma Plummer and, of course, from the Fiji coach, Vicky Wilson. So it's a big lead for the South African side. It's exactly what head coach there, Norma Plummer, would have wanted. And they're in total control here on court two, the evening session of day two of this Netball World Cup. South Africa leading the way, 47-19.
six changes for South Africa that I can bring you up to date with right now. Ziggy Berger comes on to goal shooter for South Africa. The only player to remain in their starting position is Renske Stoltz at that goal attack position. Izet Gressel moves up to wing attack and replaces Bongi and Somu takes a well-earned rest on her 100th cap. Then you've got Chiwene that moves from wing defence up to centre. You've got a new wing defence on the court in Shadeen van der Meer. Vimbella moves from goalkeeper to goal defence and Carla Pretorius takes a well-earned break on that bench. And then finally to round out their changes, you have Pumzat Mawaini coming on to the goalkeeper position. I'll give you a few seconds to be run us through the five changes for Fiji, because in the meantime, they're still flying South Africa. Siggy Berger back on court after making her debut yesterday. Shot 16 out of 18 yesterday, the young South African. But Fiji looking to keep in this. The changes have been made by both the head coaches. Yep. South Africa looking to hit the 50 point half century goal mark shortly. Fiji looking to put 20 on the board. Goal shooter resettling herself. Masami Wakanao in the goal shooting position gets a second attempt and puts one in. A nice little tap on the back from a shooting teammate. Matilla Vosia now in that goal attack position for Fiji. Her mother was a former Fiji captain. So that ball is in the blood of one of the new shooters, Vasir, in the goal attack position for Fiji. Any more, Mickey? Yeah, I'm ready with the, the team <laughs> changes in a goal shooter. We've got Waga in a goal attack. We have Bakia from centre, moves up to wing attack in Sevatia. Taribu comes on at centre. Gallo comes into wing defence. Di Bakoro stays in at that goal defence position. And Karatoka stays in at goalkeeper for Fiji as well. So wholesale changes from both Circle teams, edge. but probably for slightly different reasons. Yes. So let's bring you confirmation then of the huge changes made Back by both head, head coaches. Heads. They're the ones. The arrows mean Wing they're in. Look at them. Loads of them. So many. It was only Stoltz that avoided the cult from Norma Plummer in terms of coming back for this Goal third defense. quarter. And it stays in. Another one there for South Africa. The Fiji's changes roll through. Metzger Stoltz, 14 from 16 now. She's shooting at for South Africa. They pass the half century mark. Stoltz again, Goal looking keeper. for space. Obstruction. Hand in With the, the air. Right and Siggy Berger, yes. she'll mm. position herself, board into the squad. Due to injuries at the last minute from the South African side, just as she was at the Commonwealth Games last year, Mickey Austin. She wasn't in the initial squad, but an injury happened. I think it was to Popkeeter, and she was brought in the young shooting star. Yeah, absolutely. Just goes to show all of those young aspiring netballers out there that if you get bad news or it's a no in terms of deselection or you're out of a squad or whatever the factor may be, you must, must, must keep mentally tough and in favour and active just in case Siggy Berger has proved year on year at major championships that she can remain there or thereabouts. She's mentally resilient enough to be pulled into a squad at any point. A very, very high percentage shooter, the highest in fact in the UK Super League last year at 94%. So expect to see those percentages from her stay nice and high. So it's a nice passing round here by Fiji in the centre court. Once again, got to make it count. They've got to reduce the errors. Remember that high error count that they had as they came in and came out of half-time? Yeah, we had 18 turnovers for Fiji and only three for South Africa. As I said before, you'd be looking to be on around 20 at the end of full-time. So to be on 18 at the end of 30 minutes is really, really high. Alternatively, Norma Plummer will be absolutely buzzing with the fact that South Africa were only on three turnovers at the end of 30 minutes worth of netball. Shows that they are playing some absolute clinical netball at the moment, and that reflects in the scoreboard. Goal defence contact. 33 is the advantage the for the South Africans. Head coach of Fiji, Vicky Wilson, three-time World Cup gold medal winner. Four appearances, as I mentioned, but she did win it three times for Australia. Has made the changes. But the difference in class at the moment between the world number fives and the world number 17s is showing. But you'll get nothing but fight and determination from Fiji. The Fiji Pearls in their ninth World Cup. Looking to rack up as much as they possibly can before they play Trinidad and Tobago tomorrow. 
fantastic defensive rebound and positioning from Pumza Mawaini. She's been doing that all year in arguably the best league in the world over in Australia, the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Contact South Africa are slick in their transition through court. Lovely straight line, direct options, turning fully. And ultimately, they end up finding Berger nice and strong, presenting underneath that post, showing her movement skills here as well. And a lovely triangle play to find Renska Stoltz. She's playing well on her World Cup debut, the 25-year-old. Contact wing attack. 17 from 19, 89% for the South African Stoltz. Six from seven from Berger already. Having that effect that she had yesterday when Plummer brought her on. Well, she was a bit nervous yesterday, but she settled and ended with some good statistics and a good percentage. Yeah, I think you've seen that across the court from a lot of the debutants. You know, we just saw Shadeen van der Meer coming out with an amazing interception there, scrapping across the floor, and then ultimately it turns out in another goal. It was her debut yesterday as well. So I think it's a really Double. good, smart idea from these coaches to try and run out their players as early as they can to give them the opportunity to get those nerves out of their system so then they can actually produce a really solid performance and prove why they're in the squad. So under nine minutes remaining until the final 15 minutes. Advantage destruction. Advantage call. Van der She moves back into her position. That's the teammates take charge as they attack the shooting end once again of Fiji. Stoltz, not the tallest. Yes. In terms of stature, stands at 1 meter 68, but as effective as can be. And the caution has been handed out to the wing defence on court at the moment from Fiji. And this is Gallo picking up a caution from the umpire. Yeah, she shook her head on that one. She's not happy, still not happy now as the game continues. It's really important, you've got to bin those moments. It's happened, the umpire's not going to change their mind. You've just got to be willing to get on with the game. Well, it was a nice turnover from South Africa, but couldn't get into the hands of Berger, so it went back to Fiji. But once again, it immediately goes back to South Africa, and therefore Siggy Berger puts another one in. It's no better than an attacker getting an eye next to their name on the stat sheet, which means interception, and Renska Stoltz will be absolutely contact. thrilled with the fact that she can produce one of those interceptions. One of the smallest players on court. Standing at an uh, incredibly tall five foot six, and pins. that matches me, so yes. I'm very happy that she's out there and doing the stuff for uh, the Spa Proteas. Can they hit 60? Yes, they can. 60 playing 20, a 40 goal lead at the moment by South Africa. Their first World Cup back in 1963 when they finished six. They've never finished lower than six at the Netball World Cup, the South Africans. Looking to build on that win yesterday against Trinidad and Tobago. It's a really strong team defence from South Africa. See their mid quarter sitting off the body outside circle, angling towards that circle edge so they can see shooters releasing outside the circle and having a crack at the ball. An obstruction call inside that circle, making sure that Fiji get an opportunity to score to take the score to 60 goals to 20. And Wacker gets her second goal on the board, sitting at two out of three since she's come on in this quarter. So Berger, nicely done. 24-9 after the first quarter, 47-19 at half time. South Africa winning this third quarter by 14 goals to two. It really was a fast start by the South Africans with those 24 goals. The highest quarter score so yes. far at this World Cup is 27 goals. That first quarter by Malawi against Singapore in their match today. South Africa coming very close to that in this first quarter with Fiji. Under six minutes remaining. A little scrap, as usual, the for the ball. Yeah. Well, Akoro, the goal defence for Fiji, the on the left of yes. his shot. Poised and ready, if needed, but no, Berger slots another one in. Hold Shooting time. at 90% so far. See some really clear instructions from the umpire a second ago there, telling goalkeeper Katoa that she can see her left arm being wrapped around the body of the shooter. So that's something that they're going to have to have a look for, just as we take a 
break to have a wipe of the perspiration on the floor. It's very hot in here. Obstruction. Not as many wipes today as there was yesterday. It was a lot yesterday, wasn't there? So less on-court action in terms of tidying it up, shall we say. Less bodies on the floor, that's why. Yeah. Much better oh. passage of play from Fiji. Great cut to the circle edge from Satuva there. Landing prime position, top of circle, and a lovely high arc in feed into a shooter in Wagga. South Africa! Lots of height on the ball, backspace. Umpire Kate Stevenson, right to see the push off from Mawaini and give Fiji the contact ball. Offside in defence, free pass. Oh, unlucky. Yeah. In defence for Fiji Gallo again. Sinto contact. Comes in with a side. potential flying move, but the ball ends up in the favour of South Africa. They're looking to pop it up to 63 23 and maintain their 40 goal lead. Trying her absolute best there is Gallo to try and interfere with play and turn ball over from her team. But as we know, unless you've got a G on your bib, you are not allowed to creep inside that circle. So umpire deeming that she went illegally inside the circle to gain possession of that ball. Advantage of Strixon's on shooter. So South Africa defence do the job. Take it through the mid-court once again. Just under four minutes remaining at the end of this third quarter. Picked up on the back line by the Fiji goalkeeper. So Kamatoka. Advantage of Strixon goal attack. Nice. Moving nicely, Fiji, through the court. Now getting a bit of a stumbling block in terms of the strong South African defence. Advantage contact centre. See Golshuga Wagga with an arm up in the air, really presenting, crying out to be given the ball, demanding that ball. So her feeders have got to have trust and confidence in their South teammates Africa. to deliver the ball. I know it's hard. I know they're under all sorts of pressure and there's lots of arms inside that defensive circle. But you have to make sure you have the ability to back yourself on the ball placement into your Manage shooters. Just like that. Lovely roll off from Ziggy Berger there. Getting herself away from the body of the Fijian defenders. Bounce across the court to our left on the far That's side. Norma Plummer. Arms crossed. Straight ahead of myself and Mickey Austin. Mickey Wilson, the head coach of Fiji, has just unwrapped her arms and asked one of her players to go and warm up. So maybe changes are coming. All the players now that Mickey Wilson has are off the bench to warm up, ready and poised. Coach Wilson decides it's their time. Two tumbles, you're just saying less tumbles. There she is. She's sent her directions out, Vicky Wilson. Could see that collision coming a mile off. Gallo lurking off of her player in the middle of the court, promoting that cross court ball to go, and rightfully so, trying to come through and win it. Just got her timing a little bit off on that occasion, but right idea from the Fijian wing defense. So the youngest team in this Netball World Cup, Fiji, 24 goals to 65 down. Oh, eyes on the prize, but just rolls over the South African shooter. And an Escolt, 20 23 so far, 87%. There she is again, trying to feed it into Berger. Defensive again, called for the obstruction. Gallo continues to get a little bit frustrated. See a little bit of a miscommunication between Wentz and Stoltz and Ziggy Berger there. Stoltz wanting to pop the ball over for a pop pass, obviously not feeling confident with the defensive pressure over the shot, but the result is there. Same nonetheless, the ball goes through the net. And Ziggy Berger currently sitting on a percentage of 93, 30, Africa. So South Africa centre pass. Into the final 60 seconds and for the last 15 minutes. Stoltz again, rattles one in. Stoltz has really impressed me today. I think her court work has been brilliant. 
She's offered lots of different dynamic movements. She's running the baseline nice and strongly, as we saw in that last passage of play. She's happy to roll around the front of the circle and even then getting back on defense for her team and contributing yes. towards that three second call. So maybe that's going to cause a little bit of a headache for Norma Plummer in terms of her selection going forward. So the last 15 seconds, Fiji looking to end the third quarter on a high. Can they get past the South African defence? Can they pop one in before the whistle goes? Pumza Maweni will stand by. But the whistle goes at the end of the third quarter. And South Africa now leading Fiji by 67 goals to 25. The South Africans put 24 away in the first quarter, 23 away in the second quarter, and 20 in the third quarter to lead 67-25. South Africa are in total control as they have been since that 24-9 first quarter lead. Any changes, Mickey Austin? Changes once again for the South African lineup. Only two this time, so definitely better than a half-time. We see Holthausen come into the goal attack position and Renska Stoltz taking a well-earned break on the South African bench after providing 21 out of 25 goals for the back. South African Spa Proteas today. And we see the other Centurion in Erin Berger come into the centre Thank position you. for South Africa. South Africa. And we see Izet Grezel take a rest on the Advanced South African bench. Advantage of yeah, So Berger on. The 32-year-old in the centre position was the MVP at the World Cup. Back in 2011, the South African Nearing 120 caps now for South Africa. Unfortunate there, that was a beautiful dodge through the baseline from Raluni. But unfortunately, she was just timed out and held onto the ball for far too long. Only hold onto the ball for three seconds in netball, and she was deemed to go way past that in the umpire's eyes, which has given South Africa another chance at goal. 68-25. Nice. An appreciative round of applause from all of the fans, including South African fans. We see a change in that goal shooter position for Malawi. There you are, yeah. Bokia coming Bokia, back the onto the, the please, court. Please. Waka taking a well-earned rest. Fiji! Kakia currently sitting on three out of seven goals at 43%, which is pretty low for international netball, so she'll definitely be wanting to improve those numbers by the end of this passage of 15 minutes. Great swing across the circle from the Fiji Pearls. Unselfish netball there, looking to swing the ball, open up the angle, and ultimately find a completely free goal attack on the baseline. That's super smart netball. So, confirmation then of the team changes. South Africa in this final 15 minutes. There's the arrow for the heavily cap burger in that centre position. And Holtzhausen must be nice for Norma Plummer, replacing Stoltz with Holtzhausen. Good, reliable shooters Norma Plummer has to work with. And there's the Fiji changes in confirmation as we head into the final quarter before the next Group C matches tomorrow. Construction goal attack. Banish out of play goal attack. Just a little bit of ill-discipline creeping in for the Fijians. Contact I understand they want to win the ball back. They're frustrated that it just went off the baseline. Doing anything to try and slow so down the yes. speed of the two, South please. African attack through court at the moment. So one burger on court. Sigi Burger. Shooting position, repositions herself as Fiji take on. That's uh, in support from the Fiji bench. It's going to sideline, it's going to be a Fiji throw in. Yeah, that was unlucky from Vimbella there. She was in front position, two hands on ball. It was a contest. Fantastic triangle there. Crowd goes wild. Fiji Pearl fans are really happy with that. Again, another fantastic. Open up the angle there, and Raluni 
happy to provide that feeding role to a goal shooter. And Rafina. Centre not set, free pass. Yeah, centre not set, free pass indeed. So ball goes back. Inside the circle. Yeah, and what that means is as yep. a centre, when you deliver the centre pass, one or at least one of your feet have to be wholly within that centre circle. If there's any part of your trainer that's touching the line, then it's deemed to be not wholly within and it turns over to the other team. Stoltz. Bongi and Zomi, victorious, happy Come and smiling, as you would when you're 72, 28 up yes. in your second match Body of the Netball well. World Cup. VG chanting VG. has started. If you're not a South African fan in the arena at the moment, everybody's now cheering on Fiji. Looking for them to try and hit the 30 mark in this game. Remember, they put 29 goals past Jamaica yesterday. They're going to hopefully, I confidently predict, pass the 29 goal mark with 10 minutes remaining. And Berger, talking about flying, pops another one in. And she's now shooting at 18 from 21, 86%. Mickey. Yeah, that was a great feed from Erin Berger to Ziggy Berger underneath the post. Great vision and sense of mind to put some touch on that ball into the backspace and away from the Fijian defenders. Again, showing more skill and strength underneath that post to pull that pop pass in. South Africa lead this quarter 8-3 at the moment. So a shot of a, one of the big South African flags we just showed you there on one end of the court by Siggy Berger shooting in. There's another big one on the opposite end. Support all around here. 19 goals from 22 attempts for the young South African. And her teammates are backing her up left, right and centre, whether it's Holtzhausen or Stoltz. The South African shooters are in form and looking to try and hit and go right past the 80 goal mark. Fantastic play from South Africa there, although the ball went straight into a free Ziggy Berger underneath the post. That was created by the beautiful drive from Izette Grizel, who is currently on at wing attack for the South African Spa Proteus. She drove lovely and strongly all the way to the circle edge, which drew Karatoka thinking that she was going to get an interception just like Shadeen van der Meer did right then. But unfortunately, they cannot capitalise down the other end. But they get another chance due to a misplaced pass. Somebody's got to control the pace of this game right now. Take a breath, take some speed off the ball, just like Mariah Holtzhausen did there. Have the sense of mind. Wow. Goalkeeper, that's the dangerous play. It's a warning. That's going to hurt tomorrow. Marika Holtzhausen putting her body on the line. Fred the needle pass there from Erin Berger. Oh, unfortunate. Karatoga had eyes only for the ball. It wasn't intentional. It may have been clumsy, but I don't think there was any intent for that. Umpire did the right thing, though, in giving her a caution for that. So well done, any friends. Bad obstruction. Um, normal services continued. <laughs> a bit of a rinse out of the ear. 79-28. They'll be off the court in eight minutes for South Africa and prepare for their match against Jamaica tomorrow. Yes. But Fiji, of course, are digging deep. Contact. 28 goals Fiji. now on the attack. Nice little pick up by Van der Verver. Gives it into the hand of the Fiji contact. player. Here we go. To equal the, the amount of goals they scored Both yesterday yep. against Jamaica. 29 on the board. 79, 29, seven and a half minutes. Remaining centre pass for Erin Berger, the centre 119th cap today to confirm the exact figure. The chanting continues. <laughs> Something about a camera and a big screen that makes people smile, right? They're having fun, the Fiji fans, all the netball fans in, seeing all the matches. They're having fun. Vicky Wilson, though, rests her head in her hands on the Fiji bench at the moment. You can hear the cogs turning in her brain ahead of her match tomorrow. There she is. We see Nawai stand on the bench with that goal defence bib on, so I am pretty certain there is going to be a change at some point. 
great tip from behind. Goal shooter is Pumza Mawaini. Did a fantastic job to come over the top there, but win ball cleanly. But a great fly outside the circle from Kawatoka. I'm lucky that she just couldn't pull that ball in, but absolutely the right idea. Sit on the shooter, hunt outside. Oh, and she almost timed it too quick. She overran the line of the ball, which is why she got her backhand on it and it fell into the hands of none other. And who else but Siggy Berger? So lots of movement in the Fijian shooting circle. Nice ball across. Vasia, the goal shooter, moving around nicely. There's the chance for a goal attack teammate, Rulini, to put another one in. 12 from 14 so far. The neutrals, the netball fans, the Fiji fans like that one. Kawatoka again coming from off the body all the way through to win ball nice and cleanly. And these are really positive signs from Fiji. We've seen them now go more than their total score yesterday than they did against Jamaica. So they'll be really, really unlucky there from Luini. She's put in a really good shift for the Fiji Pals today, so just unfortunate that she couldn't come away to score that mid to long range shot. The Vanity Obstruction Centre. Sharp, clean, accurate, and a goal again for Fiji. South Africa. 81 30, under five minutes remaining. Fiji the Centre Pass. The mood and the vibe with Fiji in this final five minutes. Oh, unlucky, great switch from the two South African developers, defenders in Vembella and Mawaini. See the goal attack screening on one side, which enabled Mawaini to come all the way through and try and win that ball, but infringing in the eyes of the umpire. So it's a beautiful shot from Vokka. Contact goal defence. Oh goal yes, shoot for Fiji. Matilda Vosia putting in one at one end and Berger at the other end. Goal time, please, injury, goalkeeper. Put out Africa. Goalkeeper injury being called, so replacements for Fiji. Taking a well earned rest, I think she has been once again like she was in their game against Jamaica yesterday. One of the standout players for the Fiji Pals. So Kahatoka, the goalkeeper, departs for Fiji and takes, as Mickey said, a well-earned rest. But they're on the attack here. Nice cross-court action, lovely ball into Vasia. That's well received here in Liverpool. Well, I told you her mum was the former Fiji captain who played in three World Cups. Melita Vosia. So her mum would have enjoyed that goal from her daughter. She only started Mickey netball at 15 years old. The goal shooter for Fiji. So she's new into the sport and enjoying her World Cup experience. Already at a World Cup, how phenomenal is that? And such good development over a really short space of time, so I'm sure there are big things in her netball future. And hopefully this won't be the only time we see her at a netball oh. World Cup, because if she could handle balls <laughs> and one-handed takes just like that, then she has got a bright future ahead of her. Well, she has, and she's got the direction of a super mum. <laughs> Good stuff, three minutes remaining, 83-33. It's a 50-goal advantage for the world number five. One of the medal contenders in many people's eyes here in Liverpool for the World Cup. This Group C match. As I mentioned at the beginning of this match, they've only played in the World Cup once before. South Africa won that, so it's going to be two out of two. But Vosia, she's having a right little, oh, commentator's curse. I was going to say a right sparkling end to this match here, those confirmation of the Fiji changes scroll past. Great footwork inside the circle from Berger there. You saw her start on the hold, slide back, and then pop back through the middle of the gap of the Fijian defenders nice and strongly. And once again, providing a lovely clear route to goal. Fantastic feed from Marika Holtzhausen. Once again, we see a hold not wholly within. Vicky Wilson will be not very happy with the unforced errors that Fiji Pearls have put in this game so far. We saw 18 turnovers at half time, and I'm absolutely certain that that stat is going to be pretty high by the end of the game. See Vicky there in shot, writing down some notes. Hold time. 
Wing defence, that was dangerous, it's a warning. On my whistle. See another warning there for the Fijian wing defence in Gallo. That was pretty unlucky, really, because there was actually no contact, but maybe that was because Grizel was smart enough to turn her body away to avoid the contact. You know, if she wouldn't have done that, then I'm sure we would have been in for a really, really big collision. So that's smart umpiring and great line of vision from Kate Stevenson. Obstruction. So obstruction call, but one's popped in for Fiji. 88. 34, 21, 8, fourth quarter for the South Africans with under 90 seconds remaining. Shot from Marika Holthausen there, nothing but net, mid to long range shot. Look at this, one hand underneath ball, other hand guiding it. That is a dream. So the shot percentage, 91 in total for South Africa against the 76 of Fiji. Sneaky from Lanui there, sending the ball against the post to catch it. Look at this, before she steps onto court and finishing the shot and taking Fiji to 10 goals, which is level with the highest quarter score in this game. So a change in the wing defence position, the frustration from Elise Gallo goes off. And we've got 45 seconds here, South Africa. They've already racked up the highest score in the Netball World Cup so far. 88 goals is the highest score Australia put on Northern Ireland on day one. South Africa hit 90 at the moment with the final few seconds remaining. We see Suvita move into that wing defence position and Gallo taking a rest after her warning from the umpire. And we see Caitlin Fisher come on to centre position for the Fijian Pearls to see out the game. The final 10 seconds, South Africa 90, Fiji 35. Have they got time? It's the highest score in the World Cup so far. South Africa rack up 90 goals against Fiji. The biggest score so far on day two surpassing that score as I mentioned earlier on day one of Australia and Northern Ireland job done for Norma Plummer in superb fashion 90 35 South Africa heading to the match against the Sunshine Girls against Jamaica tomorrow void with confidence Fiji play Trinidad and Tobago they've lost to Jamaica on court one this evening but a super match a big win, a big score for the Proteas. They will come again back tomorrow. And maybe, just maybe, she'll give us a little something when she speaks to our courtside reporter, Hannah Wilk. She has to be happy, Norma Plummer. It's going to plan for South Africa. Bongi Umzomi hit 100 caps. There she is on your left. South Africa hit 90. The biggest score in the Netball World Cup so far. And a good win by South Africa. Yeah, brilliant performance from the Spa Proteas. They'll be wrapped with that leading into their game tomorrow against Jamaica. I'm absolutely certain the scoreline will be nothing like it was today. And as I say earlier, that game is going to be absolutely monumental for what happens and the outcome of this tournament. Stats on screen, as you can see, 99 shooting attempts for South Africa, an overall shooting percentage of 91 and ultimately the turnovers for the Fiji Pearls just proved too much for them to do anything in this game at a whopping 39. Fiji fought and put more goals on the board today, 35 compared to the 29 they put against Jamaica yesterday. But South Africa, 24-9 after the first quarter, 47-19 at half time. But of course, Fiji fought finished second at the Oceania Regional Qualifiers in Auckland last year to make the World Cup again. Every match, every play means something to all of the nations. And Fiji were not giving up, they just came up against the higher rank, 12 places higher in the INF World Ranking to South Africa. And the score reflected that as the South African stars led it out 90 goals to 35. Changes once again by Norma Plummer, giving her team court time. Group C is nearly concluded, but at the moment, that's win so far for South Africa over Trinidad and Tobago and Fiji, but Fiji will come back and put in the same 
passion, drive and desire that they have in both of their matches so far against Jamaica when they play Trinidad and Tobago tomorrow. Some good play by both of the teams. Really was a stellar performance though from the South Africans. Fifth in 2015, four years ago. Could this be the side that challenges for a medal as we head towards the next stage of this Netball World Cup? And of course, the finals weekend, the grand final on the 21st of July. So this is the Group C table. Jamaica played two four points. They beat Trinidad and Tobago just earlier, 68 to 43. South Africa, two wins from two. Dominating Group C of Jamaica and South Africa at the moment. And Fiji, after their defeat today, and their defeat yesterday against Jamaica. But we'll come back tomorrow for their final Group C match. Hannah Wilkes catching up with Vicky Wilson, the head coach of Fiji. Well, Vicky, that was always going to be a challenging game, but are you disappointed not to have taken it a bit closer? Uh, no, not really. Uh, they are, you know, a top five ranked team. Uh, for us, I thought we scored well in three quarters. That third quarter perhaps let us down. I think maybe it was more that we weren't able to get any ball. The speed was just far too much for us and we were forever chasing and on the back foot. Looking ahead to tomorrow, you play Trinidad and Tobago. Neither side has got a win yet, so a really important game. How do you approach that match and how do you think you can do in that game? Well, for that game, we need all 12 players to produce their best game and we haven't had that yet. So I see little uh, small improvements in each player, but what we want to do is be able to find another level and we've got to be able to get ball. And really, I thought the defensive pressure, we needed more of that down that forward line. You did make wholesale, ch wholesale changes after the second quarter. Were some of those combinations ones that you feel are quite successful moving forward or are you still figuring out and fine-tuning your team? Well, I think it's being inconsistent with our performance, which makes it really challenging. So we want to make sure that we try and find someone who's hitting some form. So hopefully it'll all come together for us tomorrow. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, we'll just wait for the next team to come on through. So we'll hear from the other coach, Norma Plummer, and our player of the match shortly. But let's then have a quick look at some more results from day two from court one. A reminder, a win for Australia and New Zealand earlier. And that win for England on court one here on the second day of action. 70 goals to 34 over the Scottish Thistles and Jamaica, the Sunshine Girls, who will be facing South Africa tomorrow, 68-43 against Trinidad and Tobago. And there's a full list then of results from day two, court two. We've just finished up with that big score from South Africa, 90 to 35, the highest score so far in the Netball World Cup, put by South Africa of 90, their second highest Netball World Cup score ever, putting 90 past Fiji. Adding to the wins on court two on day two from Uganda, Malawi and Northern Ireland. So our player of the match is now with Hannah Wilkes and she's ready. And Norma Plummer, the head winning coach, is there as well. Yes, Norma and Bongi have made their way around. It's quite a long way around from court two to this press zone, isn't it? Norma, I'll come to you first. A 55 goal win. You've got to be happy with that. Oh, yes, I was. Um, we'd played uh, Fiji, I think, back in uh, the end of 2017. And, um, you know, so we were pretty well attuned with their style of game. But it was nice to get every player on court today. It was really good. But we didn't aim for that score, mind you. It's mm. just the way it panned out. It's actually the highest score of the tournament so far. So huge, huge uh, achievement from your shooters there. It's a big game tomorrow. Getting all 12 players out on court for the second game in a row. It's got to be fantastic this early on in a tournament. Well, yeah, it, because it's a long tournament, you've got to be able to use your bench. I think I said that to you yesterday. It's really important you use your bench because um, you only need one hiccup and if you haven't used them and they're not in the play, it takes a while to get into it. So I'm very pleased with where the girls sit at the moment. Well, I'm sure you're pretty pleased as well with this lady, Bongi. First of all, huge congratulations. 100 caps for South Africa. Player of the match performance. How proud are you feeling? Uh, player of the match, I'm not sure. But um, I'm really excited. Today, 
I even forgot uh, it was my 100 cap and you know meeting with the girls obviously it came up and I realized how big this is and yeah I knew it was just another game and I needed to focus but now it's really synced in that it's happening and I've got 100 caps which is really I'm really proud of how far I've come and the achievements today obviously. It really is. Even though she forgot to run out on the court halfway through a drill. <laughs> I'm just lucky. Really pleased you had your shoes with you today. <laughs> your shoes? Were we missing shoes? Oh, that's a bit of a standard joke no. with her. <laughs> She's dobbed you in there, hasn't she? Uh, Norma, just how brilliant has Bongi been in the last 100 games of South Africa, today especially? What a brilliant kid, you know. She's just fantastic. A terrific captain. You know, she leads by example. Uh, she's articulate. She can do anything that, you know, you'd want out of a captain. She makes South Africa very proud. She's absolutely fantastic to watch as well, Boggy. We love watching it. We've got to get back to business. Jamaica tomorrow, decisive group game. It's a big one. After that performance, how are you feeling? Did you have an eye on the other court during that last game? No, you keep putting that big um, thing in the middle. We can't see the game. We'd like to have a sticky nose, but it was a bit hard to see. Um, yeah, no, we'll be out of view that. We've got it on tape, and so we'll have a look at it tonight. Uh, you know, Jamaica's always going to be a force. We've known that all along, so it's a matter of us, you know, really being able to put our game out on them. Well, Bongi, we heard some nice things from Norma about you. What do you make of your coach? Oh, she's amazing. I think I'm really lucky to be at a level um, of where I am with netball and being coached by her. Um, sports at large is really... It's, you need someone of her calibre to be, obviously, a standout at times. And I think I've grown so much confidence from her coaching me. So it's not just me. I think we're just really lucky to have her on our side. Well, very well played today, ladies. Go well tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.